everybody. Uh, I'm Jack Miller. Uh, I'm the director of rocket design for SEDS ASU Rocketry Division. We're a chapter of the International Students for the Exploration and Development of Space. And uh, a few of my friends and I started this organization in about 2017 to um, help students gain experience with technical projects relating to rockets. This is our Facebook page if you'd like to go like us. Um, but today I'm actually going to teach you a little bit about Open Rocket. So the first thing you have to do is obviously install open rocket uh, the first thing you need to have downloaded is java but you can easily go to their website just openrocket.info and you can download the latest version which is version 15.03 so what i have to do um, what you could do is go down here in the search menu and you can just type in open rocket or you know make a desktop um, shortcut but doesn't really work for my computer, but that's the easy way of doing it, and it should work for everybody else. But what I have to do, and what might help out with you if you're having issues downloading it, is if you open up your command prompt, you can actually type in this command, this java.jar um, and open rocket oops, dash 15.03.jar like this. And if you do that, it'll actually open up open rocket. So that's a pretty handy little tool in case you're having troubles opening it. Try opening up your command proper and entering that in that command. So it takes a little while to open up, but it's a really useful tool. And I'm going to show you around the interface once it pops up here. Okay, so Open Rocket popped up. Uh, this is the main interface you're going to see when you open it up. Uh, take you on a little tour. Uh, right here, this is kind of your design tree. Right now, there's nothing in it. Let me go ahead and open a file. I'm going to open one of the files we've been making. Uh, I'm going to use uh, this one right here. So this is just a rocket I've been making for fun. But this is your design tree. You can see it has everything you need in it. It has your sustainer, which is the name of your stage. Um, the nose cone, you know, a bunch of different parts in it. You can do a bunch of masses and stuff. But this is your design tree, and you can click on these parts. And you can see down here that when you click on one of these parts, it, you know, highlights these areas. It, it, bold, it makes the lines a little bolder so you can see it. Um, right here, uh, you can actually take these options, and you can move components up or down. So if I want to move this guy up, uh, well, I guess I moved it down, but it'll move down in your design tree, but I'm going to move it back up. The other thing you can do is you can actually click on this and you can kind of drag it a little bit um, sometimes. If I take this parachute, you can see there's a small line that shows up and I can actually drag it to different sections. But that's going to change where it shows up um, in your rocket model. You can see it started down here, but ended up up over here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back real, real quick. But you can see that's a little helpful and a little bit quicker than doing this move up, move down. Uh, you also have the option to add a stage, uh, which I'll show you how to do in a later video. Um, over here on the right side, you can see you can add a bunch of new components. Um, the simpler ones you can add right now, uh, you can add a nose cone, body tube, or transitions. But if you want to add internal components, you have to click on the body tube. And then you can see a whole bunch of these different components show up, like uh, tube fins, launch lugs, inner tubes, couplers, center ring, bulkheads, a bunch of other pretty cool stuff that you can add in. Um, I'm going to go over to this next tab, this motors and configurations. This is where you can actually select the motor for your rocket. So I have a bunch of motors in here. If I click on this first one, that's the same motor I have. But if I go to the next one, you can see it's going to cycle through the different motor types. So what you can do to select a motor is you double click on this and the menu pops up and you have a bunch of manufacturers here. Like um, more common ones that we always use is Aerotech and Cesaroni. So you can select those two or you can choose any other motors you want. Um, from Animal Motor Works, um, Apogee components, and you can also select the impulse length or the impulse you want. So you can choose, I only want to look at G motors, and you can see it's updating on the motor selection tree over here. You can also choose your motor dimensions. Um, typical motors, I think they start 13, 18, 24, 29 millimeters, and you can see they pop up here, but mine's in imperial units right now, not metric units. And you can also choose the motor length. I usually don't mess around with that. But if you select one of these guys, um, it gives you some basic information. The, here, you can got to expand the screen a little bit. Gives you the designation, impulse, the type, um, if it's a reloadable or single use. Uh, a lot of the times they don't know, but you can just go onto the website of the manufacturer and find out what it is, um, as well as the diameter and the length. Uh, one of the more useful tools is the details page. This actually gives you the total impulse and stuff like that. Uh, average thrust, max thrust, burn time, which can be really useful. Uh, the launch mass of it, if you're trying to figure out more stuff. It also gives you a thrust curve, which can be pretty interesting to look at and might help you out. Okay, so I'm just going to select that motor. Uh, you can see it's a 29 millimeter motor because this is a, a 24 millimeter uh, inner diameter. So it doesn't really fit in there, but that's okay for now. 
Um, and these are your options for adding motors. You can do a new configuration that just pops up something down here. You can rename a configuration if you don't like this name. Um, let's name it, um, I don't know, Billy Bob or something like that. Okay, and you can see over here in the configuration that it's now called Billy Bob. Uh, you can remove configurations. So if I want to remove Billy Bob, I hit this and it's gone. Um, we can also select a configuration and just copy it a bunch of times and have a lot of fun. Um, same kind of things down here. You select your motor, that brings up this page again. Uh, remove motor, removes the motor. Selecting ignition, that'll come in use when we are doing the um, two-stage rocket in a later video. But you can actually change when it's going to launch. So automatically it chooses launch or ejection charge and then you can also choose a couple different options. We'll show you what those will do later. And then you can reset the ignition to basically whatever its starting point was. Okay. The second tab here is flight simulations. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change back to like one of these guys right here. Okay. So flight simulations, this is where you can actually run. I'm going to delete all these guys real quick. Okay. This is where you actually get to run simulations on your rocket. So we hit new simulation. It'll ask flight configuration. And this is where if you did this, this drop down menu, you would have seen Billy Bob right here or something like that. But for now, I just have it named a bunch of random names and stuff like that. Um, you can change the wind speed, standard deviation, turbulence, a bunch of stuff like that. Or you can actually pinpoint your exact launch site, your altitude, your latitude and longitude, launch rail length. Um, I think right now ours is set for 17 feet because we compete in the Spaceport America Cup, as well as the angle. Um, that's really useful because a lot of times you might want to angle your launch rod. So you can do a lot of stuff with this. You can also reset everything to the default. Um, and I'll show you how to change a lot of things later. So the simulation that we're going to run now is just vertical motion birds this time. Um, I've got a bunch of things selected here. I can choose launch. It'll show me when the launch is. Motor ignition. Uh, lift off. Launch rod clearance is pretty helpful to have. Um, as well as ejection charges and stuff like that. Your altitude and stuff is all in imperial units. It shows vertical velocity, vertical accelerations. I could change these, but these are the three that I like and the three default ones. So if I plot this, you can actually see how high our rocket's going to go. Sometimes the plot is a little bit hard to read, so it's helpful to zoom in. You just right click somewhere over here and you can zoom in on it. But you can see we have a, in here it's kind of a little bit difficult to see. You see the launch motor ignition. Um, that's the same, same, uh, same configuration right there. And then you also have launch rod clearance. So you can see right here, this is where it finally gets off the 17 foot launch rail. Um, motor burnout happens right here, and you can see we're coasting up to um, all the way over here to Apogee. And you can see our recovery device deployment actually deployed right here, so that's not good. But we can change that a little bit later. Um, but that's some, one of the simulations you can run. Uh, one of the more useful ones that you can also run is to do your stability versus time. This is really important when working with uh, rockets because you want to make sure it's stable the whole time, or at least stable off the launch rail, because that's going to be the most important thing to look at. If we plot this guy, you can see we're going to have to zoom in a little bit. Most important thing to look at here is your launch rail. Uh, oh, it's not on there. Let me launch rod clearance here. Let's click that guy and then we can simulate it. So the most important thing here is to make sure that your rocket is stable off the launch rail. So you can see after it gets off the launch rail, which is this green line right here, it's at about 1.18 uh, or something like that. So that means your rocket's stable off the launch rail. So that's really good. And you can see its stability is above one the entire time. So that's a good thing you can check with this. And it's really, really handy when you're doing simulations, making sure your rocket's not going to hurt anybody. Okay, so that's the final tab up here. Um, and down here, this is kind of the cool part. This is where you can actually see your rocket. And it shows a lot of interesting information. Uh, over here in the right-hand corner, might be a little small, but it actually says stability. and shows you how many calibers your stability is, um, as well as your center of gravity and your center of pressure. Um, in case you want to know those, know those, and also it shows your flight configuration, so you can change this guy if you want, and you can see the, how it changes the stability. And right here, there's only one stage that's showing up, but you can add more stages, and you can click on individual ones to see those particular stages. Um, it automatically does a zoom fit. If we change to 50%, you can see it shrinks down a little bit. You can go up to like 100%, and then you can scroll around if you want a little more detailed view of your rocket, but I like to do the just the regular fit. Okay, um, this is where you can change your view type. Um, and you can see, I'll show you before that, it has the name of your rocket. Right now it's just called Rocket because I've been messing around with it. It gives you the length, which is 18 inches, and your maximum diameter, which is 1.142 inches. 
Um, the mass of the motors is about 11.4 ounces, so we're you know, about like three quarters of a pound or something like that. Um, and down here, it shows you the apogee. We're going to hit about 2,850 feet. Uh, the maximum velocity, we're hitting about Mach 0.64. Uh, it also gives you in feet per second as well the max acceleration. So we're at um, 10, 30, 10, or 1,039 feet per second squared. So that's useful in understanding how many Gs your rocket's going to be pulling. Right here, the side view type. Um, this is really fun if you want to make really cool pictures of your rocket. You can look at the back view. That one's not so interesting. Um, the 3D figure. So the 3D figure is pretty cool because it pops up like this. Um, and you can just mess around with the rocket. You can spin it around. This is really nice for uh, outreach events because kids love to just you know put their finger on this and just mess around with it and make the rocket go all sorts of different ways. But it also gives you a little better understanding of how your rocket's put together. You can also do a 3D finish or 3D unfinished, which kind of shows your rocket as a bunch of cardboard tubes and balsa wood, um, and basically just, you know it's a little bit more detailed than the. 3D, like the 3D figure. 3D finish actually shows like the outside, how the rocket's gonna look on the outside, and what I can do also if you're trying to make some cool pictures is you can change the appearance. If I want to not use the default, I wanna make it black. That's one of the presets I have in here. You can see I made it black and it shows up black. So that's something you can do to make some cool pictures of your rocket, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the side view. Um, this is the one you primarily wanna work with so you can see all the details inside of it. Um, and then I'm going to go up here again to show you the, the different um, tabs you have up on this left-hand corner. So you have file. It's got your, your regular stuff. It's got new. It makes a new rocket. Open, open recent, which is really nice because you can just select rockets you've been working on. Open example. There's a lot of preset examples that are really helpful if you want to try to mess around with stuff. Because some of these actually have a multi-stage rockets, like this one, three-stage rocket. That's really useful if you're building uh, multiple stage rockets. Um, save. Um, save as. Print, you can print picture your rocket and then close and quit. So edit, um, just control Z, control Y works on the rocket, uh, or you can hit this button, it's a lot easier to just do control Z, control Y. Scale, that'll change the scale of your rocket. Um, preferences, so this is something I do a lot. Um, you can change where your rocket's gonna be saved. Um, and you can you know change the, change the language, the design, you can mess around with this. I, I don't really don't. The one thing I mess around with the most is um, one of these. So launch, you can change all the presets for your launch. We usually has it, have it set to 17 feet, five degree angle right now, at least for our um, Ezra and Spaceport American launch, just because uh, it's much easier to change it here. So we don't change it every time in the simulation. Um, the other one that's really nice is units. You can change all the units you're in. If I want to change to metric, I can do default metric and it shows everything in millimeters and stuff like that. We keep it in Imperial just because that's what a lot of the competition parameters ask for us is a lot of the units in Imperial units. And it's just a little bit simpler to work with for us. I like using metric because it's much, uh, it's much easier to work with. Things scale a lot better and trying to set up, trying to figure out, you know, how many sixteenths of an inch are in three, six, 30 seconds, something like that. It just works a lot better using metric, but because we have to design mostly in Imperial, I just set it to Imperial units. Uh, materials, you can add some preset materials. These are ones like uh, like the aluminum right here. It gives you the density, and these are actually used to find the, the weight of your rocket, and you can add stuff to it. And graphics, uh, I usually don't mess around with this, but that's one of the things that pops up here. Okay, And tools, uh, component analysis. If you click on this, it'll show all the different components of your rocket. Uh, rocket optimization, custom expressions, and photo studio. I'll show you guys how to use those in more in the advanced video of Open Rocket, as well as help. You can send some bug reports um, and ask some questions. I've sent a couple bug reports. I don't know if they've been addressed, but one of the things I'll give you um, some heads up about is I often use a you know extended display, and when I do that, uh, Open Rocket works fine. But when I take out my computer and I use it at school or something like that, and I only have one display, sometimes when I click on one of these components, this dialog box that pops up, it doesn't really show up on my computer. It, it thinks there's an extended display that it tries to pop up on, so I can never actually find it. So that's just a heads up. Um, I haven't been able to figure out how to fix that, but if you guys, but if you just close out the program completely before you unhook it from your computer and maybe restart it, it should work fine then, but I wish it would work every time. So that's just a little tour of open rocket at the moment um 
it works really well and we've used it for all of our rockets so far. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to build one of these uh, simpler rockets. So um, thanks for listening and stay tuned for the next episode.